What's up everyone, welcome back to the series. Now that we've been able to build our API with different features, we can go ahead and document our API to make sure that our API is given to those who may want to consume it. If you're to build any sort of application, an API is simply a way that you're going to give other people the ability to use that application. Now for our case, what we have built is a simple web service that needs to be shown or used by client applications. Now those can be mobile apps or web apps and so on. So for us to make this readily available in a way that can be easily used, we need to create a documentation that's going to be easy to understand and easy to work with. Now the beauty about FastAPI is it comes with the functionality of creating this documentation in a hassle-free way. All we have to do is to define our endpoints, define our schemas, and the documentation will be automatically created for us. Now FastAPI does this by using what is called an open API specification. So this is basically a standard of documenting APIs based off the schemas that are defined within the APIs. So whenever we go ahead and define, let's say, pydantic models or structures of data within our app, those structures are the ones that are going to be generating a structure to document our application. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and visit our documentation. I'm going to open up my browser right here. And then when I open up my browser, we're going to navigate to our localhost 8000 slash docs. So one thing that you can see is this beautiful documentation right here. And this is the documentation of our API or our application. So it contains all the endpoints that we've built and what they do. So wherever we define a route handler, that route handler was basically made into the specific description of the endpoint, just like you see right here. So this is the endpoint for sending an email. So this is one for creating a user account, verifying user accounts, logging in users, creating new access tokens. So that shows you that it's very important for you to use descriptive path handler names so that you can have an easy documentation like the one that we have here. And I think that we can see is that all these endpoints have been grouped. So whenever we created routers, we went ahead and also provided tags to those routers. So if you go back to our code right here, and we go within our danda init.py, every time we registered a router, we went ahead and also specified a list of tags to be used with that router. And that's what we can see here on the documentation that book endpoints are grouped within the collection where their tag is books. So we also have the auth endpoints, which are these endpoints. Uh, we have the review endpoints and we also have the tags endpoints. Now, one other thing that you can see is all the methods for those specific routes are defined here. And when you go ahead and view the details, we can see pretty much everything we want to see. So this is a get request and it's supposed to return a 200 status code if it's successful. And then we are also supposed to see the data, which is going to be a list of our books. So all this stuff or all this information is detailed within our endpoints. And if you go within our book routes, we can see that the endpoint for returning all books is going to return a list of books and that is what is being detailed right here so whenever you create your api it's very important that you define all that data in a very nice way whenever you go ahead and clearly define your data models your responses the status codes all that stuff is going to be automatically generated by a fast api to help you have your documentation clear another thing is the schemas that we created so the schemas or pedantic models that we created are all detailed right here. So that can start from the book model, which has all the fields and the data types that are basically belonging to book objects. We also have one for, let's say, returning the email model. So this has the list of email addresses and this can have email items. We also see the one for maybe getting a book detail. So these complex models that we created that are related also show the kind of data structure that the book detail has. So we see the list of reviews being returned right here and the item can contain information about reviews and these are the different fields that a review can have. So this is basically done for us straight out of the box. We do not have to hustle. All we have to do is to go ahead and define our API endpoints in a right way, define our schemas in a right way, and then first API will do all this under the hood for us to be able to have our API documentation. 
Our authorization is also documented. If you to look at the authorized button right here, it will show you that you have the access token bearer. So if you looked at the authentication part of the series, we went ahead and looked at how we could protect endpoints using HTTP bearer auth. So when you try to get, let's say, a token from the endpoint that is to help us get tokens, we can go ahead and see the request body. So we require to present an email and a password. So if we try to get this details i can go ahead and provide my email so the email i'm going to use is this email right here you can also provide the password so the password is test one two three if i provide this simple password i'll now see the response so the response is going to contain the access token i'll copy it right here and then I'll paste it inside our authorize, authorization section. One thing I need you to notice is we can also see the protected endpoints. So all endpoints that have this keep this padlock icon are going to be protected and therefore we shall need to access them when we have a token or when we have our authorization headers. So I'll go ahead and set our authorization header for the access token. Uh, authorize and now we see that there's a change in the color of the icon so that means you can access those endpoints so if you want to provide the refresh token we can also get it and then simply put it right where we have our refresh token bearer so that is how fast api's documentation works and it's just pretty straightforward all you need to do is to write your api paths well describe the status codes, uh, the information about the data they need, the different parameters, and you have everything set up. So just like you can see in our auth, the one that requires a token will get that specific token and so on and so forth. We can also go ahead and add some customization to this specific documentation by giving more details about this documentation so by doing so we shall be modifying the metadata of our documentation and to do this we can do this within our app instance that we set up within our first api project so you can go within our main app instance and within our main app instance we can add the description just like you see right here we can add the version so this version is the one that we see right here we can also go ahead and detail things such as, let's say, the terms of service. So this is basically going to contain the URL. You can add the, so the terms of service, this can be uh, the URL to the terms of service. And then we can also have things such as, let's say, uh, so these are basically found within the first API. I'm kind of forgetting them, but you can have things such as, let's say, the title which we've provided, the description, which is our description right here, the summary, the version, uh, things such as the servers, dependencies, redirect URL. Now we can also modify where I want our docs to be. We can just come and say that our docs URL is going to be found on slash. So let me actually close this. We can go ahead and provide that on our slash API slash version one or slash the version that we set and then we can simply provide the docs url so instead of accessing it here we can go ahead and access it on so this is this will not be found but if we try to go to let's say where we have the api slash version one slash docs in our case we shall be able to get our docs and another thing we can provide, uh, the other details about the metadata. Now, let me look at those. We have the terms of service. So this is going to be a string. The contact, so the contact is going to be a dictionary. So let me actually go ahead and add that. So right here, I'll provide the contact dictionary. So this will have a URL. And I think we need to provide the email. So the email, I'll give my simple email right here. And then uh, I think this will go ahead and show on the documentation of the API. So contact the developer, just like you see right here. 
Now you can go ahead and customize this to anything you want. So we can add the, the contact information, the license info. So this can contain which license you're using, responses and all the other things, but all that metadata can be updated inside the first API instance. So I hope you have a better understanding of how to document our API with fast API and open API specification. Now, after that, you also have a support for Redux. So if you're using this API specification, you can have the Swagger documentation, which is the one that we have here, but you can also have the Redux documentation that's going to be found on the Redux URL. So we haven't yet set that up, but what you can do is to come and also set that up to be found on slash API slash version then slash our redoc. So instead of this being our docs URL, we can rename this to redoc URL. And then uh, we can have our redoc documentation found on that specific URL. So we can just come and say on slash redoc. So I hope that is what we have set up here. This, uh, this is not supposed to be docs, but it's supposed to be redoc. So if you come this side and visit our Redoc URL, we shall now see another way our documentation is going to be shown. So we see that we have uh, our documentation. So this is the open API specification and it's simply a file that has the entire structure of our documentation. So we have our email and of course, this is what open, fast API and open API specification will be. So this is going to be a JSON representation of the structure of our endpoints, just like we've gone ahead to describe them. But all that is made beautiful in this specific presentation right here. So we can see which API endpoint, which status code is going to be returned and which information is going to be returned. So all that information is going to be detailed in our Redoc and our Swagger documentation.